Hello everybody, welcome back. This is going to be episode 11 in our Legendary Dwarf campaign. I am the Strategy Professor. If you'll recall last time... Uh, just grabbing the time real quick. Okay. Um, if you'll recall last time, uh, we had some pretty good manual fights. We got to fight the quest battle, and we also got to fight an underground battle. Uh, and at the end of last turn, actually, we were attacked by savage orcs in our town. Um... So as I discussed at the end of the last video, uh, this is actually quite advantageous for us, I believe, because we have... Our core force looks fairly weak, right? Like, we only have six units here. But um, we're also going to have... And I think because this is the first name listed, this is what's naturally going to be on the battlefield, so it's only going to be six units. But then we're going to get reinforced by... Uh, 13 units here so we really have 19 and they have 12 so they've opted into a 12 on 19 it's giving them heavy favorite on the odds so we're only getting a 30% a, um, a chance and as I also discussed in the last video um, they often discount the dwarves quite a, quite a lot so they won't really give you the kind of odds that you deserve on the uh, auto resolve and as I said, I really, really like this because it helps self-regulate. It stops the auto-resolve abuse. And, you know, from an entertainment perspective, the broadcasting perspective that I'm trying to give you guys, I think this is awesome. And just for the integrity of the game, I think it's awesome. Lots of people have said that, uh, you know, Total War Warhammer is one of the most challenging Total Wars to date. And I agree. And I like it that way. I want it that way. I want it to be awesome. I don't want people to be able to auto-resolve their way to victory. So I think this is really cool. But either way, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, before we do that, I just want to note uh, just what they have here. So they have, what, four normal savage orcs. This is going to be their front line. They have a pretty respectable um, general here. Although, if we'll notice, he's put all of his points in campaign skills. So that's probably not going to help him at all in this fight. So those are four uh, almost useless points for battles. Like, it's great for whatever getting some extra obedience or some extra gold from looting or something like that but it's not going to help him in the fight whereas my guy doesn't have that much he's just a level three um but i at least have the one battle skill to give me extra leadership i don't even think he has that he doesn't even have that so um then of course this is a garrison force so i think we should be able to do well in this let's go ahead and get started It might be giving them those odds because our force is split up at the beginning, where it just has a hard time calculating reinforcements. <coughs> or it just thinks that we're just not going to be as strong as I think we are. Okay, so we're even getting the reinforcements on our side. Look at this. So as far as I know, the reinforcements seem to just be in really random places. Um, but the last couple of times this has happened to me, where we have reinforcements for either them or for us, it always shows up on the enemy territory. So usually reinforcements would be like here, or if they had reinforcements, they'd be here. There's actually one video, I don't remember if it was the Dwarf or the Orc campaign, but where we had their reinforcements coming out in my territory, and then minor reinforcements were coming out in their territory. I think that was earlier in this campaign, actually. So that's really cool. Um, okay, so what we want to do, obviously, is just get together with our guys and then just kind of see where we can go from there. I think uh, I think we can probably just take this ridge. Now, one thing, one consequence of being close to this side of the map is if something runs, it's going to run off the edge of the map. So it's very little time for something to rally. So if our guys run, they're going to run off the edge. But that goes for their guys, too. If they run, they're going to run off the map. And I think they are probably more likely to run than I am. They certainly are statistical, like just from a straight statistics perspective. But remember, with Legendary AI, they get a bunch of extra leadership, and I lose leadership um, from that. So, um, Nevertheless, I think this is our, our approach. Also, if you're next to one of these, like the edge of the map, then they also have a much harder time flanking you. So if they had a bunch of wolves or something like that, um, they would have a really hard time flanking me because I could just set up a diagonal here and then just like maybe leave one unit back here and I would be able to protect all of my flanks so they couldn't get any of those nasty uh, wolf flanks that we've seen them get in this campaign and that they definitely got in the orc campaign on us so I maybe should utilize the edge of the map a lot more I'm just always a little bit scared of that because you know if my guys run then they're gonna run off the map but I think it's advantageous in many situations to be near the edge of the map 
Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and start here, and then we're just gonna line up right here with our guys. He did have some boar boys, actually. He had one unit of boar boys, I think. Savage work boar boys, so this will actually be advantageous. Okay, so let's just go ahead. As our units file in, I'm just gonna group them together. Okay, so I want all the boilers for sure over here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oops. <laughs> Not that. Um, so I guess I just have to kind of drag them one at a time over here. Of there's a faster way to do that. Okay, so we're just going to make them control group one. We're going to make this control group zero. They're kind of lining up over there. Um, go ahead and line up our guys here. And let's just get the rest of these guys to just form a nice big line right here. We don't have any artillery, so that's not a major consideration. We also want to leave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room to micromanage, like the uh, the bows. So, right, so we're just lining up here, form a nice wide lineup. We can. I would like these picks on the perimeter, but. I mean, I guess that's okay, whatever. Um, right. I want this guy kind of in the middle here. Okay, so I'm fine with them just kind of shooting whatever they get clean shots on. We're going to focus their ranged units here in a little bit once we have to run back, but for now I'm fine with them just shooting whatever comes into range. These guys will probably try to flank us, so let's go ahead and get a couple shots in on them. I actually want to sit here, oh, with these, all of these guys too, I want guard stance, so they don't chase. So remember if they charge right here, uh, I have charged defense, so it's not going to be a huge deal, but let's just go ahead and get in here. Just get on them, just a couple units. Just to lock them up so they can't charge us. Okay, we're going to readjust here. Alright, so they are getting pretty close. We're going to go ahead and charge in there. On them. And just back our guys up a little bit here. Just back the ranged up. Uh, okay, so these guys ran, so my guys, because they're in guard mode, um, they're not going to chase him. Okay, so we want to get around and flank a little bit. Alright, now we want our shooters to go ahead and just take out these guys. Make sure we don't have shooters in melee. We actually do have some right here. I want out of that. Um, and my main guy, I want to go ahead and just get him to fight their main guy. What do we have? Uh, weapon damage, missile damage, sure. So we're just gonna pop that potion here. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and aim for these guys. So once again, we want these corollaries out of here. We don't want them caught up in this melee. So let's just, just back up. I mean, we have a little bit more range, and I just really don't want my guys caught up in melee combat, so. Um, Oh, somehow they've gotten out of here. Oh, jeez. They're going to charge my guys at the back. At least face them. Jeez. The cavalry is so annoying because I don't have that mini map, so I can't watch them. Um, my main guy's getting kind of hurt here. Back up. So they're running again. I really... That's very, very annoying. Let's get in here and deal with this. Okay, so... Where's my main guy? Okay, so get in there. Guard mode. Let's take him out. All right, and we're just fire on these guys. These boars are just really messing us up. Run off the map, freaking pigs. <laughs> get off the map. Okay, thank you. It's quite aggravating. And this guy's getting up here messing up. Okay, so... Really pretty. They've done a pretty good job of managing this situation. Shoot these guys down. Let's get in here. Just flank. Shoot them up. This guy should go any minute now. I'm hoping. 
I'm just gonna step up a little bit with the archers. I just went out of this fight with archers. Like he's tying up so many archers. Just get in there and kill him. Get these picks in here. Okay, so we've shot a lot of those guys up. Let's just start focusing the guys. We want to hit the same unit if possible, but they're just really disrupting a lot of my ability to form the most effective rotations. But we obviously want to focus fire just to get units to run. Okay, run this guy down. Okay, so I've got these guys on guard mode. Um, let's just charge into their back. Actually, let's just charge into their back and just go ahead and break these guys. I wouldn't mind even really shooting into their back. Okay, so these guys are... Okay, so all those dudes broke. So we're just going to charge down here. Give a huge mass. I'm just going to aim for this guy now. Just see if we can shoot him down. Because everything should be breaking pretty quickly. So he has a lot of armor, so I'm just not sure if we're going to be able to take him down, but... Why can't... Okay. It's not letting me click here. There we go. He's just going to run those guys down. Oh, he rallied back. You want some, huh? So I guess he's using some kind of item on these guys. I don't really know what the deal is, but... This is a shower of arrows. I mean, surely some of this is going to kill him. Okay, good. Got him. This should definitely break him. Alright. Let's just shoot him up. These guys are still able to hold, even though their general's dead, which is uh, suspicious. I mean, I don't understand how that works, but... Okay, let's go ahead and send my guy out here to just clean these guys up. Right, we'll go ahead and speed this up. I think we probably know where this is going to go. Let's just run over here. Okay, yeah. So let's just see if we can run some of these guys down. I doubt it, but let's just see. I'm going to speed it up here real quick. So, you know, they did a pretty good amount of damage to us, but remember that a lot of these guys are also garrison units, or at least five of them are. So... Yeah, it's not the most ideal fight in the world, but it was still pretty good. I will commend them. They did a really good job of locking up a bunch of my infantry. They just found a hole right in the middle. Um, and I should have tried to fill that hole a little bit better. But... Okay, I think that's that's all we're going to get. Um, but we still got a decisive victory. And, you know, it was giving us 30% odds or something. So... I'll take it. We got about even deaths and kills, which is not great when you outnumber them as much as we did, so. These Savage Orcs really are a much bigger threat than normal Orcs, at least for the Dwarves, because we have such heavy armor, and that's kind of their specialty. As well. me if you dare. Extra armor piercing. Okay, so they killed our garrison captain. I, I don't even know. I, I thought the garrison captain was just this guy, so I don't really know what that's supposed to mean. There wasn't anyone in the garrison. It's just our guy reinforcing from out here. Our guy also started off tired. All of our units started tired that came in. And they stay tired throughout the entire fight. Because that's what happens when you march to support. You start off tired and you stay tired. So I'm not really sure. Maybe that had something to do with why my quarrelers weren't quite as effective as I would like for them to be. I mean, look at that. That's so few kills. Like, that guy got 120. Um, but the rest of these guys got almost nothing. And I think it's because it affects their accuracy quite a lot. Um, if they're tired when they shoot. And these guys were all tired when they came in. Let's look at these quarrelers. Got 68 and 54. So these guys were not tired when they came in and shot. These guys were tired and they killed almost nothing. These guys probably were the ones that got to shoot down those two battalions at the end. They were running. Or they were probably the closest to do that. So they definitely got some kills in. But still, I think that, you know, this is pretty, there's pretty evident that the tiredness really affected their accuracy quite a lot. Because these guys got way more, on average, these two untired ones, than the guys did over here. Like, these guys got almost nothing. 
other than this one guy, which I think he was shooting people that were running, is my guess. So, and all these guys are really tired too. Let's see how they worked out. So it looks like about maybe, I don't know, average of 20 or so kills. This guy had 56. These guys each had 30, 21. Uh, this guy had 11. So keep this in mind, guys. Look at this. Like, this doesn't show up on the stat sheet. It's really hard to figure this out. Um, I told you, I think, a couple of videos ago about the only stats I could see were that it just lowered your melee attack and your melee defense um, just a little bit, as I saw in my trolls in the uh, work campaign. But this obviously has a major, major implication, or that's that seems to be pretty obvious to me that the people that were in the garrison having this many more kills on average uh, and everyone just being mixed up in the same ball of units there having more kills on average than these guys these guys even have well not that much of a bonus a little bit but not much um, it's pretty indicative that the tiredness the fatigue the lack of vigor really dramatically affects your performance in a fight so just keep that in mind it, it's not going to show up on stat cards or it's really hard for me to find out what the exact modifications are but just you know looking at this um, evidence here it's pretty easy to use some inductive reasoning to infer that there's quite a large penalty if you're tired in the fight so all right money as usual okay so this is still during the intern process all right so the Empire confederate with Stirling. So once again, a bunch of other computers are using this confederation, so it's not exploitative. They use it to their advantage also. In fact, there's way more of them than there are of you, computers. So once again, if you think that confederation and me like, you know, trying to angle my politics to get more confederations and to plan ahead to try to get these confederations is really gamey and exploitative, it's not. It's very interesting and important strategic considerations. And that's great. I love this option. With Total War Warhammer over Attila. I liked Attila a lot, but I just I always felt like a just a jerk when I had to go and just kill my allies. Like I would have this guy, you know, and maybe I've befriended a barbarian. I think it was like the Vandals or something in the campaign early on. He was getting onto my territory, and I was like, maybe I could just pay him um, to become my ally or something like that. And I did it, and he helped me fend off all these other barbarians, and I gave him some property. Um, and it was just really cool. It was like the Romans were kind of allied with these barbarians. And that's historically accurate to a sense. And they were helping me fight off other barbarians. And eventually they fell and died. It was just a really cool kind of mechanic I could have. But then there would be other times where I would ally with someone. But eventually I needed the territory. And I just had to turn on them and kill them. And they're really, I mean... I could try to get him to turn to vassals, but then sometimes it wouldn't work out. So anyways, I just like it how you can play good, intelligent politics with your friends, and eventually you can gain a, a major tactical advantage from that without having to turn on them and kill them. They can just become a part of you through confederation. And it's balanced around different penalties you get from those confederations. So I think that's really cool from a war perspective. I think it's really cool from a strategic perspective. I just think it's a great addition. And I think it's pretty well balanced. As you've seen, I'm not just able... What? Okay, so just minus 750. I mean, <laughs> I like these random events too. It just kind of throws a wrench in some of your, your planning, so you can't plan too far ahead. Uh, but they're not so game-breaking that they just completely can throw your campaign off. Good. But anyways, I, I really like all these different first. options. Okay, so once again, we're just pushing forward with these guys. We've committed to trying to take all this territory. To just get a, to see what's going on down here. To see if we want to confederate with Zifbar or not. Um, and remember, we had to wait for the public order situation to kind of stabilize before we did this anyways. So, right, let's go ahead and... How far can we tunnel? Alright, I want to go ahead and just tunnel up a little bit more. Just so I get vision. This is kind of dangerous, but... Okay, so there's Zephar. So they were over here with this four stack a second ago. We weren't crazy. Um, but now we should be able to take Mount Gunbad next. This is probably all they have left of their army. The Greenskins might be sieging them or something here would be my guess. That's why they're returning home. I don't, I don't know for sure. But the coast looks clear to take out Gunbad and possibly get some more uh, cash flow going. 
so that's good. Um, the public order situation here is bad. I, we must have had some kind of bonus that wore off. I mean, I know military crackdown has been wearing off over time, but it spiked, uh, I guess, last turn from positive one to like negative four. And I really didn't have an explanation for that because we're not getting raided. Like, I don't get it. But these guys backed off during the intern, so that's very, very fortuitous for us because we could not have handled a 20 stack of dwarves on our door. Um, so they did actually back off, so that's good. Um, My axe thirsts for war. Okay, so let's go ahead and upgrade this. So axe lord, always. Uh, let me just... Are there any other items he can have? Let's make sure... Oh, he looks pretty good to go. This is one of our newest uh, recruits. Obviously, he's a pretty low level. Let's just see if we can give him anything. Okay, so let's take a look here. So I think I can run him down twice. So I could tunnel after him, but I think we can run him down. And I think that's going to be auto-resolvable as well. I mean, this time it's going to be 13 on 7. They're kind of banged up. That seems auto-resolvable to me. I don't think that's too exploitative to auto-resolve this, so. Bring them. See if we can get them. See what they give us. I mean, maybe they'll give us terrible odds again. We'll see. Okay, so they're giving us pretty good odds. Um, auto-resolvable. It's going to hurt my guy. But... I mean, this is a, a consideration. Because... What is, okay, he's got a ward save of 10 now, so that's good. Um... This is a consideration, though, because we still have a lot of missile superiority. Our guys aren't tired this time. Now, we're not going to be able to run them down, so that's also important to think about. Um, because if we auto-resolve this, I think this guy's going to get hurt quite a lot. And we may not even get to use him, because we're going to have to fight back a rebellion here in a second, also. So we might want to manual resolve this anyways, just because we can get so many kills out of these guys before they even get close. They only have one unit on the front line. But the problem is, if I don't auto-resolve, they might get to run twice, which they would run out of range. So I think here I really need to auto-resolve so that I can make sure that I kill this guy in two turns. Or have a much higher probability to kill him with one chase instead of two. So we don't have the movement to chase him twice. So let's just auto-resolve. I, I really hope they don't hurt this guy too much. I think they're going to, though. Let's see. Yes, a little bit. So it's not great, but again, I'm almost priced into auto resolving simply to avoid the the double run the double retreat i hope because as dwarves we can't run them down we just cannot run all of them down and kill every single one of them if we were a race like uh you know maybe the orcs or something with wolves or with spider riders or something like that um we might be able to to run them all down but we can't let us begin we can't with the dwarves not until we get to our copter so we have to auto resolve just to secure this victory, I think. So I still think the double auto resolve always yields a kill. Or it's much more probable at least to yield kills. Yield kills. Definitely sounds southern. Okay. It is always an interesting identity because I am southern and I am also a uh, almost completing my PhD in literature uh, British literature especially so it's always curious because you know I sound like a, a yokel or a, a redneck sometimes and I love yokels and rednecks so if any of you guys are yokels or rednecks don't be uh, don't be offended in many ways I am kind of a yokel and a redneck right um, but it's always it's it's just very interesting to think about how that works and then of course when i'm just talking colloquially you know in this stream uh or just with some of my friends i just don't sound very proper at all i'm not a grammar nazi none of that but the the game changes when i start writing the game changes quite a lot and i can sound quite sophisticated but anyways you might hear my southern drawl come out even more than usual with some phrases Okay, Axe Lord again. So once we get one more point, we're really going to kick it into overdrive. Okay, so now we have some choices. How are we looking on public order? We have a little bit of public order. This threat left, I think that's off the board right now. So we could actually go aggressive here. Retake this town, get a little bit more cash. Um, this guy is getting aggressive. He has 17 yeah. units. 
Ready. So, Zogo. and I think this has five, right? Yeah, it's got five um, units in the garrison. It is time. So, we're taking attrition because we're in the Badlands here. Um, so we got. So we could try to fight him with uh, 16. These guys are pretty hurt though, and I don't think the garrison gives you. It doesn't give you any quarrelers. So we only have two quarrelers, which are really our advantage. They have a lot of stuff. So. Yes. Oh, but I also need to get up here and stop this rebellion. As you can see, we've got a rebellion next turn. So. For the wisdom. We might have a really tough fight coming up here. Um, this guy just might even die. I don't think so, but... Can I beat these guys? Just a straight slugfest. When my guys are halfway hurt? Okay, what are my options? So, this guy can't help. He's too far away. It just doesn't make any sense. So, I think I'm going to... Well, let me go ahead and combine these while I'm just sitting here thinking about this. They have 100 total in a stack. Okay, this is going to drop them some ranks, but whatever. I need to save money, obviously, right now, so. Let's boot them. They're just too low. That's fine. I really wish they would let you pick and choose because you can't rearrange your units. At least I don't think you can. If you guys can, let me know. But I don't think I can like pick this and drag this over here like you, you can do during battle. So it forced me to combine a bunch of stuff here that I didn't want to combine. Like I didn't want these guys to be at a full 100 because then I don't get any replenishment when I step back into my territory. Like I just wanted to combine the 44 guy with the 50 guy. Um, but, okay, so saved a little bit of cash there. We almost got back into the positive. Onward. Now, Aye. we're going to have to come up here, though, in Almost order to, like, it's going to be a 7 on 8 again. Well, we can throw this runesmith the in there. Fires glowing. We can throw this runesmith in there and uh, potentially get some more. So we can combine the runesmith within this turn, and then we can turn into an 8 on 8, I think. See, so we hire 3. Yeah, we can turn into an 8 on 8. Um, but that means these guys are going to be down here. They're pretty hurt, and it's going to be a 16 on 17. And he's going to have full stats. Summon me if you dare. So the question is, do I just abandon this then, and just let him take this territory, and then try to retake it next turn, maybe? I don't have any hiring facilities here. I got rid of it, which I shouldn't have done that. For just a little bit more wood, it's not worth it. I should have just kept it so I could hire more yeah, dwarf warriors or something. Um, the other option is I can come down here with My this guy, reinforce the town. So then it would be what uh, 20 on 17. With my guys being this hurt, the computer might consider that a fair fight and fight me. The problem is though then we're going to get a rebellion here next turn. There's no way to stop it. I mean, I could stop all income from this town and save four uh, public order, but obviously, you know, it cost me 1,900 gold, and that's that's just not happening. Um, so that doesn't seem like a good option. Okay, I think I'm just going to commit. I definitely have to go up here and stop this rebellion. I just I cannot let a 20 stack get going out of control over here. I just am not going to have the resources to catch up with that. So, and they might even get something bigger. They might even get trolls or something here because now I have a, a tier three. So it's possible they might even get better units. I'm not sure how that scales, if it's based on time or based on the tech of the, the town. I think the tech of the town would make the most sense. Okay, so let's just go ahead and commit to running up here. And then we can decide what to do here just so I make a decision. I have this is number one priority. This is the core of my empire. I cannot let this get overrun by a twenty stack of green skins. So Forwards. Okay, so this is definitely out of the way. I need to go ahead and just hire Agreed. 
It's three dwarf warriors, just the toughest things we can hire. Um, then I just want to go ahead and combine my runesmith with them. Yeah, I mean, I could play around and just like have it outside of the range a little bit and just do his little whatever anti-hero stuff and he would get some experience but I think he's gonna get some experience anyways by following and it's gonna guarantee that I get maximum movement range with this dwarf next turn because I think if you combine on the same turn as we've seen it takes away some of your movement so I just want to go ahead and get him in there and just use him as another unit now he's not gonna be awesome but he's okay I mean 320 weapon strength like, that's all right 120 armor so you know he can take some hits if you auto resolve he will take a lot of damage and so will this guy so just keep that in mind I'm probably gonna manual resolve this for that reason okay so we're committed to stopping that we just stopped this I think the next logical move is to take this back we've already got something burning here it looks like we can kind of see that through the fog of war so I think they're probably getting sieged by these guys, most likely. These guys are getting a lot of territory. Like they've, let me see, they've probably got like eight territories or something. Seven, yeah, so they're, but they're only ranked 26. So they don't have a huge army. So we could just, this is not gonna get a rebellion for a couple of turns. So we could just go right here, just heal up, um, and then a little bit, and then take this out next turn. And then we're committed to either abandoning this, just letting them have Iron Rock, or making a stand and trying to fight them, even though we only have two ranged units. That just, this is gonna be so hard to win. For the wisdom it is going to be a 16 on 17. My guys are hurt, so it's really closer to like 14 on 17. Now he does have Axe Lord. Max Axe Lord. These guys are really hurt, though, so this is closer to being like a. You know, a whatever, like 3 less, so maybe 8, so assume he's basically 13 on 17. He has a good, healthy number of orcs, also. So it's not just goblins. And these guys are pretty bad against me, I think. Um, we don't even know what else is here. Okay, I think I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to defend this. So I'm going to walk up. How much do we need for the uh, mustering and camp? 50%. So I think I should be able to walk up and then camp. And that will at least give me leadership and melee defense. So let's just see if we can walk like right to the edge here and in camp I don't know just see moving come on no too far so we're not gonna be able to encamp we can ambush but I think oh that's kind of cool I didn't even notice that you can potentially spot their ambushes by 50% if you try to ambush um, now if they come up and ambush me, then if they come up and ambush or attack into my ambush, then I think uh, it's only this army. So I don't think I'd get the reinforcing garrison. I'm not sure about that. Leave me a comment in the comments if you know for sure. But I think ambush is just a one-on-one. -on -one. So they don't get reinforcements and you don't get reinforcements. So I think in this case, I'm just going to run to like the edge here. So that I want to be inside this red circle, though. So I'm just gonna run like here. Move. And my reasoning behind that is, since they get to run away if they defend a town and the town loses, then I might get to run away if the town loses. So if they fight this and I, you know, fight a decent fight, and my lord doesn't die, and we just run out of there, then I might get to live. There's an outside shot I get to live, but. All right, guys, we got another really hard fight coming up here. Um, Black Crag, this isn't the Greenskins, but we can already see they have uh, Spider Riders and Trolls, potentially. So it's important to just keep an eye on. We don't know what this guy has yet. But it's going to be about 14 on 17. 
We got Axe Lord stats, we specced into early Dwarven Warriors, so we'll see if it pays off. Um, okay, so one final yes. move here. I think this guy is just going to go right here. Children Get a little bit of replenishment, us. not a ton. But this will put us in position to retake this town and just make a lot of cash next turn. And then we can come back and fight this rebellion right after that. So we'll probably just sack this, just because we're not going to be able to hold this most likely. We'll sack it, take it. And then we can just farm some rebellions if they don't come up here and retake it. So I think that's what our game plan is going to be. Just to get the cash, because obviously we need cash right now. And then these guys will take care of those rebellions. So, I mean, we might have a... And we're going to have to take this place up here, at least start sieging it. So we might have three or four fights next turn. Um, okay, let's look at diplomacy real quick. I probably should do diplomacy at the very beginning of episodes. Because if like these guys wanted to confederate, for example, that could change my calculus. So let's take Greetings, a look. Greetings, kin of another hold. Do you want to What can I do for you? Now, they don't always tell you what they'll do with the counter offer. So sometimes you still have to shop around a little bit. Um, but I just, once again, I'm just throwing out a feeler here just to see how they feel about it. It's probably going to do this every turn. So it's not happening. And these guys are still kind of mad, but we're getting better. Why? Treaties. Alright, they have some tolerance. That's good. Now, they had a 20 stack army, so we definitely want to be Do friends not. with them. Alright, Karakadrine. Okay, so we got vision of these guys. This is also a group that I want to confederate with, like, really fast. I mean, I pretty much want to confederate with everybody, let's be honest. Uh, but the reason that these guys are particularly important, I would say these guys... And Karak Azul are the two most important factions to confederate with, at least in the early to mid game. Karak Azul just has a ton of property down here. Do they still have all their properties? They are bleeding properties. I think they had seven two turns ago. So the orcs are definitely taking some of this. So they might buddy up to us a little bit more when they have like maybe three or four properties left. Obviously, I'd like to get them when they have, you know, the most properties, but people that are in a good position aren't going to be desperate enough to come to the table because confederation is completely losing your sovereignty like it shouldn't be something that a group would do easily and these guys are quite strong they're rank 12 they have three properties they have like this this and this probably or maybe this this and like something over here I, I honestly don't know but I see they're at war with the red eye who I'm not really sure who that is but I think let's go ahead and see if we can buy that war Sounds like an orc. Kin of and it sounds like it's pretty what far away. Can I do for you? So let's go ahead and get a non-aggro pack here. Uh, let's just see if they'll pay us for that. They probably won't, but you know. Any cash is good cash. I'll try 300, and then we'll just try flat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I offered to pay them 300 there on accident. Okay, so... Oops. <laughs> Just make sure you're present everything. So that means they're not going to do this, right? Yeah, they're not going to do it. So we have to wait a few turns on that. But we might be able to join a war. Okay, so they're kind of interested in that. Uh, demand payment. Make sure we get the right thing this time. Try 300. Once again, this will not only give us cash, this will give us a little bit of political favor with them. Not a lot, but a little bit. Okay, so they, you know, they just met us. They're kind of a little hesitant, trying to get a good feel or see what's up. Sifbar. Aye. Let's hear what you have They to are say. green on the we'll confederation, so they desperately want it. I think they might have been green last turn, but this means they will pay us probably like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars gold. Sorry, um, to confederate. But well, let me think about this for a second. So we can take another eight here. We could take another eight and not be over the line. We're already going to get a rebellion here that we're dealing with next turn anyways. Um, we're going to get a rebellion here. We, two more turns for rebellion here. Um, these people don't really seem that interested in confederating right now, so they're probably at least a few turns away. So maybe we do just confederate right here and just take a lot of cash. Get this army. You know, once again, I could be walking into a really bad situation here. And I'm going to anger a bunch of dwarves. So it's possible these guys actually come back and fight me. Um, see, the vampires have something right here, too. So they have one 
town and this property. The other one has been burned. We can see that now. And Zephar, I suspect, is under siege. So maybe I shouldn't get that confederation just yet. Because I'm not going to be able to support this fight over here. Although I guess I could leave this alone. Alone? Alone. I guess I could leave this alone and just like beeline over here to help them if I confederate. It's kind of dangerous. It's not sure. I mean, if they're already getting sieged, I can't tell. How much, uh, is it going to tell me how much vampiric corruption is in this province? I mean, once again, the only problem here, I don't, okay, so public order is clear. That's fine. It's just angering these dwarves, and I think I'm just going to do it. I want the cash. I might be walking into a bad confederation here. Um, but I want the cash, and I do want this property eventually. I'm going to anger Carrot Kadreen a little bit here, but they'll get over it. Um, yeah, let's do it, and let's just get some money. Honor to your ancestors. You know, they might be, like, one turn from starving out or something. Um, but, you know... Okay, low, so they won't do that much. 1500 moderate okay so that's on the table but we're not going to take that right away we definitely I mean we could get money off of that and then save the confederation I mean if I could do a defensive alliance they would actually uh, give me some vision of the area to see how bad it is I guess that's a way of hedging my bets but I kind of just want the cash so let's try this again. It says green, so that means it, you know, should probably happen. Oh, this is high, actually. Okay, so we got it. Okay, so let's see what we won here. We probably just won a massive pain in the butt. Let's see. Okay, so they actually have two armies. They are getting beaten up by the vampires. That's not a huge vampire army, though. What do we get here? Okay, so... They've got a... An iron mine. We can buy corollers here. Now, <laughs> that's obviously a massive problem. We have to sell some of these armies. For the wisdom um, of Valea. I mean, this guy's so hurt. It's just not even worth keeping him around, I don't think. He has level 2, so we can get him back later as a free lord if we dismiss him right now. One rug. Um, and we could probably dismiss this guy too. Vampires aren't really being that threatening, at least not from what I, I can see. No. And I think because they just became a part of me, I don't think they're technically at war. No, they are, because I'm at war with them. So, buying that war is now becoming uh, relevant, for sure. Okay, so the red eyes are up here. Crooked Moon. Who am I on? Karakazul? Okay, so they're going to be mad about this. Yeah. Not that mad, though, honestly. A little bit. Not super mad, though. Let's so see if we can speak before my join the war against the Crooked Moon, who are just some orcs in the area. So with orcs, you know, I'm happy to go fight them. Okay, low. But not for free, of course. Even though it would help us politically a little bit to go to war with them. Um, Kara Karen. Okay, so they're pretty upset about that. So they might come back with that 20 stack here in a minute. We'll see. But they did a peace treaty, so they sh it should have to wait 10 turns. We'll see. These guys are obviously not happy about that. That's fine. Uh, Empire. Warming up a little bit. Let's see if they want to do a the trade. The Celestial College implores that I hear you. I remain unconvinced. Okay, so now we would both make a ton more money. Because I think they just did a confederation last turn so they got a bunch more resources I got a bunch more resources so and by the way when it says uh, 
whatever that I'm buying this much from them, that doesn't actually cost me gold. So I don't get the difference. I don't just get 284 gold. Each one of our empires gets this. So I get 684 and he gets 400. So it's mutually beneficial. Even if you're making less money than the person on the other side would would make, you still probably want to strongly consider it just because you're making more money. And you're just banking on your ability to leverage that money better than the enemy. Let's just see if he'll do it straight up. No. Try one more time, we'll just throw 2,000 his way. Let's see if he'll do it, because this will pay for itself in just a few turns. I've tried that before, it didn't work out, but we'll just start there. I could nickel and dive him some more, but I, I just don't think he's going to do it yet, so we'll just have to wait on that. Um, the Verland. Okay, so we got vision of these places now. Not be able to do much there. Uh, let's see, top knots. I just beat you up again. You ready? Nope. I still want some more. Nothing to do there. Okay, so that's all for politics. Okay, so we've got Zufbar. So what do we want to do in Zufbar? Let's take a look here. Um, so we cannot make a good gold building because we just can't. Uh, well, I want to actually sell this. We'll get 900 gold. Because we're not selling all of our iron, I'll guarantee you we're not selling all of our iron. I don't even need to go look at it right now. It's just not happening. Um, so they have a level 2 right now. They can build something here. What do I want to build? I could level this up. That's a lot of gold. How much gold do I have? Probably not much. I have 6,000, so I can't really build a lot right now. So I could build a gate. So this would help us... Um, with reinforcements. It's 2,500 though. I mean, this helps us out a little bit with income from buildings and trade resources, but largely it's not worth it. This will be a major front where we're gonna be fighting a lot of things, so we definitely wanna upgrade this region. So growth might be the ticket, it's only 500. It'll just get some growth going. Um, oh, that's actually quite nice, but, but, it's also 4,000 gold, so, this will be excellent later, once we turn this into a major recruitment center, um, but for right now, probably not. We could, since we're level 3, we could work towards gunners, so let's take a look here. Okay, so... At this point, I believe we're committed to... These guys These guys do not have movement yet, so... Um, we're committed to taking out Mount Gunbad. Then we can run up and take out this and work our way around. I don't see any major vampire threats. Even if they come over to so far, you know, our garrison... It's scary enough. I mean, eight units... This will take probably four turns to get down here. Okay, let's just go ahead and do growth now, just because I'm not sure what's going to happen. I was thinking we could go... I mean, we could start building this. Here's the thing. We could start building this, and then by the time my guy, um, Thorgrim, arrives over here, then we'd be able to build Thunderers and uh, Cannons. But that's a lot of money. You know, that's almost 7,000 gold we just don't have that right now so i think just build this just have something to do how's the public order looking oh. wow okay so actually getting negative 20 per turn so i could build a refectory i've got five turns on a rebellion over here well no i'm just gonna go growth so I'm not really quite sure what else to do, and this will be beneficial always. We have about five or six turns on the public order. Uh, so I think he's going to be able to come over in five or six turns. The problem with that is this place is also going to have a rebellion after we take it. It's actually going to take two turns to take this if I want to take it. Because it's got walls and I don't have a catapult. What? So maybe I could drop over here first grab a catapult if I build uh, if I build the level 1 building here, if I build this level 1 I could drop over here, grab a catapult 
grab both of these buildings. Try to secure those. I'm just not sure. I kind of want this. I don't want to leave this to chance. I want to get this secure. I'm just getting really thin on armies here. Um, okay, so this guy's level 1. This guy's level 2. He's so hurt, though. For the wisdom of Valea. I mean, I suppose I could leave this guy around, cancel everyone else, run him over here next turn, build some units. I can still just get Quarrelers and uh, Dwarf Warriors, and that's fine for dealing with most threats. If I need to sell this growth thing later, I can. Once again, I'm only losing, you know, 200 gold just to keep it around right now, and I can use the growth later. So in that way, once I conquer one of these territories, it's just going to let me um, just build stuff immediately, level them up and start getting gold buildings, better security, all that stuff. So... I think I'd definitely get rid of this guy, so let's go ahead and do that. Give him the boot. Okay. Um. How does he have great weapons? He must have had a building in one of his other buildings, because usually to get great weapons, you need uh, this. And he doesn't have this, so maybe he had it in one of his other buildings before it was taken over. I think I'm still going to need one general, although this is so expensive. How does this even get this expensive? This is like an extra thousand gold for this. So can I afford a thousand gold a turn to keep this general going? I think the short answer is no. I just I just can't do that right now. So I could bring it back later if I need to. And I would like to hire units here, but I just I just can't. I just gotta get rid of him. I mean, he's only costing me three eighty. I mean, I could come over and hire units, but uh, I just don't know. He does get some experience every turn, I think, just for hanging out. I think he gets a pinch. How much does this does this place has? Uh, Grand Peak has six. Two of those are big ones. Why do they have that? Let me see their buildings. I guess the level 3 gives him that. Um, so I'm just thinking. I don't think the vampires are going to be able to siege me like right away, maybe. But I think if they do, they'll wait at least a few turns. So it's not a threat. And I just don't think I'm going to be able to afford an army. Like, I can't get a, a, even a 7 stack here to go take out this stuff because I just don't have enough money. So I think I just got to give him the boot. I'm not going to be able to leverage him for at least another five turns or so. And he'll be available to rehire in five turns. So if we look at um, hiring a lord, recruit a lord, uh, you'll notice this guy's free because I booted him earlier. So he doesn't cost anything to hire him back. And uh, these are the two guys that I just kicked. So it says they'll be available in five turns. So if you're not going to use a lord for like five turns, you know, just get rid of him. Save money for five turns. I'm not going to be able to recruit for at least five turns. I just don't have the money for it, so. Okay, so everything's set up. I'm still not sure about this acquisition. It's okay. We're not under immediate threat. Um, and I think I should be able to stabilize this area. I might, you know, by the time I get the money going here and here, I might be able to afford one more lord here just for rebellion duty. But we'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're looking on time here. Uh, we're not looking great. We have about five minutes left. But go ahead and just see if we get this fight. Okay, that looks a little more dicey. Yeah. <laughs> so they're sieging me right now. I've got nine turns. Okay, we got the fight. And it's about even.
we've got about we've only got about five minutes left and I don't think we can do this in five minutes it's gonna take a lot of careful strategic planning to figure out how I'm gonna be able to leverage this um, they're not going to have magic this time, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the swiftness here. And we can just throw the magic on someone random, I guess. Just on him. But they don't have any magic. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. So we definitely start off with a um, with a good fight next turn right here. And then uh, we also have to worry about Zufbar. We have to choose whether or not we're going to uh, move Thorgrim over there to take care of that. Or whether we're going to take care of some orc territory or meet somewhere in the middle. Like, how are we going to deal with that? Um, so the best plan might actually be to jump over that wall where we were, leave the capital alone, but then take over the secondary town, and then we can hang out near Zufbar, beat back the vampires, and that will let us control rebellions in both that area and in the secondary town area, while perhaps we also gain some territories in that province. So that might be our best plan of action here. But anyways, we've got lots of options, lots of fights coming up. We have a great one right off the bat next episode, so please join me again. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to broadcast to you, and have a wonderful evening.